When I entered into the green room of my first TEDx talk two years ago, a student came up to me. After introducing himself and knowing that I was speaking about God and science, he said in a loud voice in front of all the other speakers and volunteers, how can you believe in God? What does God have to do with science? You can't prove God. See, he thought these areas could not share the same space. And admittedly, I was pretty surprised by such a direct confrontation with the absence of the normal pleasantries about the weather and sports. <laughs> in fact, everyone was pretty surprised because the whole room went silent and everyone was staring at me. I realized that I needed to say something Otherwise, everyone would think that I, the speaker, agreed with the student's assertion. So for today, my thesis is this. It's all about space. God and science can share the same space. Unfortunately, we often use these topics to discount one another. But what if they could be used to support one another? Now, this is not a proof of anything, such as the existence of God. Rather, this is a thought discussion on the possibilities, analogies, and connections that may exist. So let me share with you this riddle that was once shared with me and I enjoy sharing with others. What if we all lived in this room? We're all born here and died here. And there's no connection with outside, no windows, no doors, and we can't communicate, no internet, texting, etc. You see, we can't escape and we can't hear through the walls. This room is all we have ever known. Given that, is there any way we can know that there's something on the outside? Well, some will say no, because how can we test it? Anything we state is just a guess. Others will say yes, how could there not be something on the outside? And still others might start to ask some troubling questions, such as, how did all these chairs get here? <laughs> None of us knows how to make chairs, but these chairs are pretty amazing. <laughs> Could there be chairs like this on the outside? <laughs> Did something from the outside cause these chairs to get here? You see, analogously, these are the questions we ask about our universe, the big room that we live in. And we wonder, is there something on the outside beyond the bounds? We as humans like to take potentially what seems disconnected, the certain with the uncertain, and see if they could share the same space. But can we really do that? How did we get here in this seemingly disconnected world where we seem to disagree? How did it all begin? Well, a scientist like myself might describe the beginnings using the Big Bang Theory. And bang is probably not the right word. It's more like a cosmic expansion where a huge amount of energy converted to mass through equals mc squared. Now many of you may want to ask about the initiation point of the Big Bang, or that question mark up there. I hope you don't ask what was before the Big Bang, because there was no time before the Big Bang. There was no before to speak of. And I hope you don't ask what was there, because there was no space before the Big Bang. There was no there at all. And I hope you don't ask what it all consists of, because there was no matter either. No time, no space, no matter. It's really taxing on our English language just to be able to describe that question mark. So how do others do it? Well, as you might imagine, everyone from the atheist down to the God believer has their own ideas. Just to name a few, some might say that there was God or some sort of spiritual idea going on. Others might explain the question mark, saying that there was nothing, literally. And still others may use an esoteric idea, such as the multiverse. Now, these ideas are not necessarily mutually exclusive. However, they are pretty interesting in that they are all connected. You see, we must explain, give explanations that lie outside the bounds of empirical science. In that sense, the God-believer and the atheist are actually not that far apart. You see, we all must give an explanation that is metaphysical and lies outside of what we know in order to describe the mysterious beginnings of our universe. You see, 
this space that we occupy might not be as far apart as we first thought. But still, you may say that, well, philosophy and theology are completely disconnected from the outside world and the natural sciences. Well, let's consider something in science called a system. For example, take my blue ballpoint pen. I happen to love blue pens. And I found this pen. Now let me ask you, did someone make this? If you say yes, how do you know? Let me add, I found this pen in a forest between a twig and a rock. <laughs> How's this pen any different than that twig or rock? Do you still think it has a source? Well, see, these explanations uh, are a little bit confusing at first. And we might not be able to describe it scientifically, but on an intuitive level, we know that this pen is made. See, the pen is an example of a system. And a system has three parts, and there are many examples of human-based systems in our world, like the pen, a vehicle, a computer, or anything of that sort, really. Uh, the three parts of a system are a source, or what originally envisioned the design of that system, the process by which it came to be, and then the final existing system. So say our pen here had some source which imagined blue ink and beautiful curves of plastic and then went through some process to collect the necessary materials, the ink, the plastic, etc., and fashion it together. And finally, we have our pen, the final existing system. Now for me as a pen user, I don't necessarily need any explanation. You see, over time, I'll realize, oh, the cap comes off. And if I touch the correct end to a piece of paper, usable markings are made. You see, I don't need to care about the source who made it or the process by which it came to be. I can just use my pen. The same might be true of you and your electronic smart devices. You might not care who made them or how they were made. You just need to update your status on Twitter. Hashtag Enderly. <laughs> now what about the more difficult questions and sources out there? Say the electron. Does the electron have a source? Or what about our universe? Does our universe have a source? And where does science fit into all this? Is science a source, the process, or the system? Well, actually, by definition, it doesn't really matter if you're an atheist or a God believer or whatever. Science is a study of the process by which things operate, function, and came to be. We must admit that science does not tackle the metaphysical questions of our universe. That's left to philosophers and theologians. And in the same vein, philosophy and theology are not meant to describe the scientific processes of our world, at least not in this sense. That's left to the scientists. But fortunately, our world is still studyable and understandable, even though the mystery of the source may still elude us. But unfortunately, I can function and operate quite well in my universe without ever having to tackle the question of the source or caring about the scientific processes of this world. I can just exist. So can someone say that they don't believe in God because of science? It cannot be. Can someone say that they don't trust science because of God? It cannot be. The source and the process answer completely different questions. And they can't be used to discount one another. However, they can operate in a commensurate fashion working in parallel to support one another. Or as I said earlier, science and God, science being the process and God potentially being the source, could occupy the same space. This shared space idea is probably something you do all the time in your lives, but you might not actually realize it. For example, my wife Peggy and I have been married for 11 years. And before we were married, when we were dating, I had to do my due diligence as a really good scientist to thoroughly and meticulously study the potential of our marriage. <laughs> was this gonna work? So I collected all the evidence and the data that I could come about. And I looked at factors such as personality. Were we compatible? How about our family history? Where did we come from and where were we going? And how would Peggy be affected by all my neurological idiosyncrasies. <laughs> well, after looking at everything that I could, 
I determined with certainty that our marriage was going to work. <laughs> However, when I got to the wedding day and I was up at the altar, I realized that I could not have 100% certainty in the longevity of our marriage. You see, there were still too many unknowns and mysteries and questions that had no answer. And when I got to the point to say my I do's, I realized that I had to allow the certainty and the uncertainty to share that same space in order to move forward. And I still have to do that today. And I've learned that I can be okay with certainty and it doesn't have to concern me. It can share that space. But still, you may ask, is there really any uncertainty or mystery within science? Well, actually, there's something in science, as one example, called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, which states that uh, the position and the velocity of an object cannot be known, albeit subatomic, at the same time. You see, either the position is definite or the velocity, but not both. Now you may wonder, is this uncertainty uh, a function of our ignorance or inabilities? Or is it actually a characteristic of the system? Well, this question was actually the contents of a debate between two well-known scientists, Albert Einstein and Niels Bohr. Einstein argued that the uncertainty was above, a function of our human ignorance and inability to describe true physical realities. While on the other hand, Bohr argued that the uncertainty was actually a characteristic feature of the system. And in this case, Einstein was wrong. You see, there is no state in science with a definite position and definite velocity. It's not a matter of human ignorance or substandard laboratory equipment or experimentation. The uncertainty is an innate, fundamental, characteristic feature of our system. So much so that the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle is commonly taught to college freshmen in introductory chemistry and physics classes. Theologically, you may feel a little bit of concern with the uncertainty that God brings into a space of science which contains so much seeming certainty. However, if we acknowledge that science has within it innate uncertainty as a feature, we need not to be so concerned or afraid of uncertainty. It can actually dwell together with certainty. Or, as I said, God and science could share the same space, and albeit it could be that both of those have their own amounts of certainty and uncertainty. So I had to respond to that guy who said loudly and awkwardly, how can you believe in God? What does God have to do with science? You can't prove God. And then the most awkward question came to my mind. And in a voice of equal loudness to his, I said, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> I said, yes. I said, can you prove to me using science that your girlfriend loves you? And he said, no. And at that point, the awkwardness of the room escalated to alarming rates, reaching death call level three. <laughs> You're right, I said. You cannot use science to prove definitively that your girlfriend loves you. That's because you cannot take science to a place it ought not belong. Every area of study has its own method of proof, which may or may not be the same as science. You see, the methods in science may be different than that of psychology, or that of a court of law, or archaeology, or art, or philosophy, or theology, or your relationship. <laughs> and after I said that, no one spoke to me for quite a while. <laughs> after I finished that TEDx talk, the student came up to me as if a completely different person at that point and thanked me because he knew how much God and science were connected. You see, he realized that God and science can share the same space. And for me, that shared space is much more sufficient in giving me a broader, more holistic view of my universe. How about you?